欢迎。Hush, I'm indeed. Ahlan, wamkile kile. Welcome. 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 Please move to the center of the museum. Careful there! Don't trip over the artifacts. I'm sorry, all the trees have been cut down. But we have some really nice things that people own. The dead trees support them. Welcome. 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 This is the portrait of a friendly city. This is a museum of Canada. This is a museum of Ontario. This is a museum of Hamilton. This is a museum of colonial complicity. Parcel of land on Mackenzie Road was to become a subdivision built by a real estate consortium. Instead, a group of Indigenous land defenders from Six Nations occupied the site on July 19, 2020, halting the build and renaming the property 1492 Land Back Lane. Caledonia. Six Nations. Gunnestaten. That's 25 minutes from here. 30 clicks. Neighbors. A groundswell of support is mounting for the encampment on Mackenzie Road in Caledonia, Ontario, which stands in violation of a July 21st injunction and could be raided by Ontario Provincial Police at any time. October 9, 2020, an Ontario Superior Court judge has given the 1492 Land Back Lane camp until October 22nd to vacate land slated to become a subdivision in Caledonia, Ontario, before he rules on making an injunction against their presence permanent. Making an injunction against their presence permanent. Against their presence. Their presence is permanent. It's their land. The Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Confederacy. The Cayuga. The Oneida. The Tuscarora. The Onondaga, the Seneca, the Grand River Mohawk, the Anishinaabeg, the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation, and, and the other, other nations, nations recognized, recognized and, and unrecognized, unrecognized, recorded and unrecorded. March 30th, 2021, OPP spent more than 16 million dollars policing 1492 Landback Lane. 16 million dollars for a peaceful protest. Surveillance, raids, imprisonments, arrests, for a peaceful protest. July second, twenty twenty one, a year long occupation by Six Nation land defenders has forced the cancellation of a major housing project in Caledonia, Ontario. The developer said Friday, a success, no development without consent, a moratorium on land development across the Haldeman Tract. But court cases continue. The injunction remains. The land defenders remain. The police still watch. Families surveilled. Children. My daughters, I wish I could love you without intergenerational trauma wrapped around my vocal cords, without sort of English in my mouth. I wish my words felt like honey instead of bees. I wish I could love you freely, without emotional constraints that have been placed on me. I wish I could love you like this place never existed, as if our home was never invaded, as if our families were not systematically torn apart at the seams, open, broken, held together by the need to decolonize, to rise. I wish I could love you. As if our sovereignty was respected, without our treaties being neglected, 
Sometimes all I can think about is being able to love you without the weight of our land being stolen. And I want so badly to wrap my arms around you and melt into each other. Without fear of agents knocking on our door, I wish I had something more than this rage to give you. Let it be your protection. Let it be wood for your fire, tend it like gardens on sunny days. I wish this poem wasn't so heavy on my tongue. I wish I could hit rewind. Go back down to that house on the river and place your grandmother back into her mother's arms. I wish I knew stillness instead of chaos, dizziness. I wish I could hit rewind another one dead hung by her neck, another one OD'd, another child denied basic humanity, another one locked up, another unfair verdict. My girls, I hope another one is never you. I wish it was understood that another one was always the intended outcome of those schools. And as a people, we have a long way to go, my girls. I wish I could love you as if we were already there. But I will love you open, broken. Mother you as if you are earth and moon, land and water intentionally. My daughters, I will love you. Hear her cry. For her children. For the land. Bound in by bonds of failed policy. Fenced in by good intentions. Unfree. The land torn. The land broken. The land dying. Roads are like poison. A virus spreading infection. Extraction without pay. Burning forests. Raging storms. A rising sea. The land torn. The land broken. The land dying. It can be hard to look forward, to learn from the past without getting locked in the present. Looking back, painful history, crimes unanswered, oppressions ongoing, continuing in the present without accountability, closing imagination from what could be. Seven, Seven generations. generations. Sa. Setta. U. Ezin. Bin. Its name. E. Saba. Liu. Lan. Jai. Teleta. Ar. Inye. Sa. Che. Banj. Sa. Liu. Do. E. Che. Ar. Jai. Tanda. Bani. Inye. We come from seven generations forward. On a shared path. From, from one future, with an offer of a way back, to hope, to hope, to hope, to hope. Um, yeah. um, yeah. um, yeah. Salam. Mera naam hai Sitara, aur mere yaha hone ka maksad pani ki ahmiyat ko taslim karna hai. Hi, my name is Sitara. And I am here to recognize the water as life. Ahlan, ismi Subay, wa ana hamilat al amal. Hello, my name is Subay, and I am the carrier of hope. Molo en nomke, ikamalan kumambe, dilata ukusayate usuli umstan. Hello all, my name is Mandela. I am here to help you sustain the land. Sajia ho. 我叫张宁, Hello everyone, my name is Zhang Ling. I'm here to honor the treaties with you. Sacred treaties can guide and sustain two roads, side by side, sovereign nation, two vessels in a river of peace, parallel lines that never cross, respecting, not interfering, sustaining, not possessing. There is a way to live together. That is also a part of sovereign nation. Maintaining, stewarding, harvesting, a dish, one spoon, a land to share peacefully. No knives needed at this table. Many people, one spoon, a land to share. 
Keep it clean. Leave some for the future. Take only what you need. Leave some for the future. For the future. For the future. You will follow us. A journey. A commitment. An action. Step forward. There are some who walk among you. Who know, who defend, who commit to, to protect, protect the, the land. land. 1492 Land Back Lane Defenders. They will share their thoughts with you on this journey. Follow us. Follow your color. Follow Purple. the color. Follow Everyone who can follow, follow me, follow. please follow. follow Anyone who can follow me, please follow. follow. Hi. Yellow. Everyone who can follow me, please follow. This is your journey. This is your journey. This is your journey. This is your journey. Where are you at? What do you know? What will you do? Where have your people been from? How do you provide for your communities? Can you tell me about uh, where your people are from? Uh, my people were originally from uh, Aguazazne, and then my family had moved to um, Six Nations and I think maybe about six generations. Uh, we've been in, in six. Can you discuss, um, from your perspective, the importance of women within land defense? Yeah. So, being able to have that balance between masculine and feminine and the beautiful way that like those dualities play out with each other is crucial to at least, I think all land defense actions, but like 1492 specifically, because, you know, if it's just that masculine energy and, and, and the men, then things tend to go wily to one direction. And, you know, if it's just women, then it tends to be like too nurturing, too, you know, love and peace. And so when those, those two energies and, and those two existences can come together and work in harmony and allow for like balance and safety but also like that um firmness and um aggression when it's when it's warranted so can you tell me um where your people are from from six nations grand river territory mostly mostly the upper end so the next question is kind of a um, little bit of a big question, but um, from your perspective, what have your ancestors done to allow you to be here? Fought, a lot of fighting. For me to be able to call myself put in the Shoni is, is, you know, like from my ancestors, they did, they, uh, they did a lot of fighting to keep our ceremonies alive. To keep, you know, to keep our, to keep our, our territories, you know, a little bits, little bits that we have left, and like they just they, they set the groundwork for the for the for the stuff that you know for the same stuff that we're still fighting for today. What have you learned from about being a man um, and like a father and kind of? Like, what have you learned from the women from the camp about, like, your roles and responsibilities as a man? A lot. <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot down there from, from the women. They, uh, before, even before we went down there, I, you know, I talked to, had women talk to me and, like, just explain different, different roles and responsibilities of, of men and you know, help me help me understand them better, and you know what I'm supposed to do as a man, and how I'm supposed to how I'm supposed to present myself and carry myself. 
they explained it explained a lot to me, you know, like and like what is what is what it's um what it means to be a warrior and you know like stuff like that was you know like where I didn't I didn't always have all them teachings. You know, I, I had a lot of teachings growing up but nobody that explains stuff like that to me, you know, I never never really had a dad or anything, you know, so you know, it was uh it was nice. It was nice to I learned a lot. I learned a lot being down there about I learned a lot about, you know, the responsibilities of, you know, not just men but everybody in the community and I learned a lot about myself. Like Can like to think I grew up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about what that was like and like the responsibility to protect the women? It was overwhelming at times, you know, like there's, there's always, always that constant fear, you know, of like, of are the cops going to come in and raid again and, you know, how are we gonna how are we gonna protect the women and the children that are there and you know like the different the measures that we had to go to 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 ensure to ensure the safety and you know the, to ensure our women and kids were protected was was crazy you know like we shouldn't we shouldn't have to dig up roads and fucking train tracks and stuff and you know dig trenches and stuff to make sure that our women and our kids are, are safe you know that's that's that that was intense, you know, like just uh it's just part of that was just part of being down there, you know, like I just knew like everyone had to we had to be protected, you know, everyone had to be safe when whenever whatever we're doing, whether we're just fucking singing songs by fire or you know, like everybody had to be protected and be safe, so you know, it's, you know, it sucks that we had to go to the measures that we had to go to the to ensure that safety, but How many of you are descendant of the early settler on this land? Yes, this land has a history of colonization, but China is not a colonizer. We didn't invade other countries like your ancestor. We are peaceful and have always been our own homeland, which makes me proud of sharing my history in class today. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Some good insights there. I just have a quick question. You said China never invaded anyone. Did they not invade Tibet and Taiwan too? Why? Tibet and Taiwan are part of China. Well, <laughs> Taiwan is not part of China. Okay, can we stick to English please so the rest of the class can understand? Thank you. Why don't we focus on our role in colonialism on this land? Taiwan has our own state, our own people, and we have been that way for decades. You can't just say that we're part of you when our people don't agree. Colonial China is a threat to Taiwan's sovereignty in that sense. Well, you could say that the relationship between Taiwan and China sounds similar to the, the impact that the Europeans have on the indigenous peoples in Canada. Whoa, what the heck? What is going on? Andrew? What is he saying? Uh, he's saying hello. That's a lot of words for hello. 
I mean, Mandarin is a complex language. So I am the Mandarin student. How did I get to be a Yang person? Who is he? He's my ancestor, the Chinese emperor. Okay. Well, can you ask him how he got here and what he wants? Um, I think he's here to defend China's history. It's good to have allies. Xian Zhu, we are really defending other countries, right? Yes, the Chinese people are really defending China. 留下一支血脉便算是开天恩，要是敢得寸进尺，告诉他，公平不是靠嘴说的，军事实力远比洗筹头情重要的多。所以我们真的占领过别的国家吗？当然，看看你现在的样子，穿着洋人的衣服，出乎他们嘴的谎言太丢人了。Andrew, what is he saying? He's saying he doesn't like what I'm wearing. That's it. He also said he rightfully conquered the land, and gaining power is more effective than begging for empathy. That's not what you said in your presentation. I know, but he's my ancestor. Even I don't agree with his actions, but I have to respect him. 真是站着说话不腰疼，朕乃一国之君，你一个生活在和平年代的酸人，怎么理解领土的重要？怎么理解战争？对一个国家来说意味着什么？可是台湾不需要你们的统治，你们和之前的荷兰人一样，抢走了本该属于我们的土地。无理取闹，想要回土地那便自己打回去，跑来这跟朕说有什么用？难道要把朕的土地送给你不成？我是说你做的事情是错的。Excuse me, I think some of us may need a translation here. What is she shouting at that fancy dude? Um, she's saying China wants to colonize Taiwan just like the Dutch did. So you're telling me? At some point, Chinese people invaded Taiwan. Yes, no, it's not exactly. Like that. I think we can all agree that there are some complex histories at play here. Yeah, I just Google it, and uh, Taiwan actually does have indigenous people, and they're um, trying to preserve their languages. In Fun Taiwan? Fact. Yeah. It's true. So Taiwan was invaded, but not by mainland China. Why, Wang Bo Ping? Seems like what? Li Shimin also colonized the Kitan Mongols from northern China. China is really oppressive. Not just now, but throughout history. Wait, Canada is not that perfect either. Your ancestors did some pretty cruel things to the indigenous peoples here. And they were here first. Don't you think what your ancestors did was wrong? Uh, those weren't my ancestors, all right? My ancestors were just poor farmers who helped mend this land. Enough, you two. Let's focus on today. There is still colonization the indigenous happening people here today. We're That's wrong. what's important here. <laughs> Wait, our ancestors left us with their problem. Now we're just adding to them. Why can't we get along? We need to listen to each other. You know what? No, Canada is a great country. We're peacekeepers, not like China. You think China is the way in some media? It's not like that. But your granddaddy would seem to confirm that it He's is. He's just but... one leader. He doesn't define China. False. I'm the ancestor. Ancestor, please. Canada is not that great either. What do you mean? You can't just blame me for shit other people did in the past. Well, that's exactly what you were doing with Taiwan and China. Come, everyone. It's time to go. Wait, it's not about history or our ancestor hate. It's about us, about today, about how we treat each other. And how we benefit from the ongoing oppression of others. This will not be resolved now. It can be resolved, but not here and not now. Those are actually some good points. Please, exit this way. Enough! I never invited you into my class. It's time for you to leave. Get out. It can be hard to look forward, to learn from the past, without getting locked in the present. Painful histories, crimes unanswered, oppressions ongoing. Please follow me to our next destination.
What did your ancestors do to make it possible for you to be here? Okay, so where are your people from? My people are from North America, all over the world. But locally, Six Nations. And so, um, this is kind of like a big question, but what would you say that your ancestors have done to make it possible for you to be here? Uh, continued on with our ceremonies, our way of being, our culture, our language. Uh, more importantly, our traditional government has survived up until this day, which is the oldest form of government. Um, our treaties weren't made with band council, so um, they're able to sustain their um, roles and responsibilities. So with that being said, um, I guess we're able to continue on like with our inherent rights. And do you think it was um, like a challenge for them to, like what did they have to sacrifice so that you could um, have those things today? Um, let's see, there's government policies, like there's the Indian Act, residential schools, um, Indian agents that were on Six Nations that enforced the government rules and policies of our people. They overthrew our traditional government in 1924. Um, I guess just that whole system of oppression they fought against, like in through education, through church, you know. I don't know, all the oppressive structures, I guess, they survived and managed to maintain our language and culture. So they, yeah, they went through a lot. So can you tell me about uh, where your people are from? Uh, my people were originally from uh, Aguazazne, and then my family had moved to um, Six Nations in, I think, maybe about six generations. Uh, we've been in, in six. Um, and can you tell me, what have your ancestors done to make it possible for you to be here? My ancestors have faced prosecution for maintaining ceremonies. Um, they have survived residential schools and oppressive and genocidal policies by the Canadian state. Um, they face criminalization just for existing and living and being um, to fight for the land and the culture and the language and the ceremonies that um, I'm fortunate enough to um, still practice today. Um, and can you describe a waterway that is significant to you? I can. <laughs> um, the Niagara River, <laughs> um, which we're filming at right now, is um, a really significant waterway for me. It's been a place of like healing and self-reflection and like the place that I come to, to ground myself. It also has like historical significance for Haudenosaunee, like the War of 1812 and, and all of that kind of stuff. And like this like historically was also a place that we had utilized and um, was very much a part of who, who we are as Haudenosaunee.
it's so calm, yet so disturbed. It doesn't feel the same with people like him here. I've been fishing in these streams for decades. My father once brought me here, and now I'm worried that this river won't be able to provide for my children the way it has for me. Now this river is empty because of people like him. They take and take and take and never give back. My community needs this river to survive, all the while he has everything possible at his disposal. I have people who rely on me to come back with food, yet there is nothing left to bring. They use our boats and expect it to be okay, and these lanterns everywhere keep the fish from rising to the surface. I just can't see a thing down there. How do I work around these strange novel items? I just wish he could understand how much of what he does affects us and changes our lives, our land, and our river. Where is his concern for the environment, for the land and the future that we may be destroying? I've been sitting here for almost a quarter of the day and I've only managed to catch three buckets. How is this right? He's fishing so close to me when I was clearly here first. They think that everything is theirs, but if they only knew how everyone saw them. Dirty lowlifes. Can't even buy nice fishing gear with all the money we fork out to them. No wonder they are starving. We let them live on our land, we educate them, and they keep acting like we are the problem for helping them become better, more civilized people. One day, they will realize that they must follow our rules to get anywhere. The river has a mind of its own, you know. It can see and hear all. Decades of lives have been lived here, and only few are ever truly seen. What the river fully remembers, we will never know. But those who choose to listen carefully will find there is so much more to discover than what meets the eye. The water is so blue today. This canal will keep the trade routes going. My father fought so bravely for them in the war, they gave him this land as a reward. Hurry up, we're gonna be late for church. These stones are so pretty. Can you show me how to skip them? We're supposed to give this land back when we die, but this is mine now. I will sell it if I want to. The Crown took our land without paying us. They had no right, it was ours. I didn't like the sandwiches at the potluck today. I was robbed of my homeland. When I was a child, my father took my brothers and I here to swim. They aren't using any of it. It's nothing but overgrown forest, anyways. Help! Help! My home was flooded. What am I supposed to do? Where is she? I can't see her anywhere! It smells like rain. Was there a storm out here last night? Can I help you? I'm cleaning here. Where are they coming from, asking us for money? <laughs> Please, I'm not giving them anything. Will they ever give us compensation for the floods? The Welling Canal did nothing but hurt us, not help us. Squatters are an issue. Please help. We cannot deal with it on our own. There used to be a berry patch over by the Smith Farm. But it's not there anymore. Why are they so mad we're here? What is this Haldeman track they are talking about? My husband is building a new home for us. Soon we'll have our own farm. Get back! Get back! You cannot be here! Oh, you're catching me. He tried, but they won't pay us. They are coming! Hi! When did this land become mine and yours? Rather than just land. Will they ever pay our debts back? The Claus estate shouldn't have to pay anything. Where is my lawyer? I couldn't get them to leave my property. I called the police. I know you didn't want me to, but what else could we do? Look, it's her first time swimming. I remember when that was me. My grandparents used to tell us about the villages they had. They said before the war, there were hundreds of us in villages and settlements across the area. I guess the war kind of brought us both here then, huh? And now, I'm going to live on this huge land with all sorts of new things like the farm. Well, if you make a farm, where will you put it? I'm not quite sure yet. My pa says most likely they will survey the whole area and then pick. 
You should avoid trying to grow on the east side where the animals graze. They pass through our land through there, and if their trails are changed, I worry they might not come back for us to hunt. My pa says only savages still hunt like wild people. We aren't savages, and we only hunt for what we need for the year, never more. It keeps the deer population from getting too large. Well, my pa would still say you're savages, so why should I listen to you? Because you're talking to me and looking at me, and are we really all that different? My father says your people are savages. Well, my father says your people are savages. Where have your people been from? So why don't you t start off by uh, telling me where your people are from? I guess originally we were sort of upper New York state and over time we've migrated down to what is now known as Six Nations. Um, had to do with an agreement with uh, Brant and Sir Haldimand and this is where we are now. Very nice. So can you tell me, um, you know, I know that there's a, like a lot of focus on land, um, but can you tell me about like a significant waterway for you? Um, I don't know, I guess it would be hard to just say a significant water, <laughs> like water is just important, right? Um, gives us life. I mean, you could default on the sort of go-to, which is the Grand River, because, you know, all the, all the, I don't know, agreements to be on, like, X amount of, like, the Haldeman track running along it. Um, but, I mean, Niagara Falls is significant to our people. Um, when we were more settled in the States, like, the Cayugas had Cayuga Lake, which was, like, clearly significant to them. Um, but, I mean, there's... The lake just down the way at Port Dover, that's significant. I mean, I don't know. The water that's like inside my body and being is super important, you know? Like the water that makes up my children is very significant. Like even like when I wake up in the morning, cause like there's no like running water and stuff. Like when I gotta wash my face with dew from the ground, you know? Like a dew drop is real small, but it's still a very significant body of water to me, right? So. So where are your people from? My people are from North America, all over the world, but locally Six Nations. So why do you do what you do? Standing up for my inherent rights. Um, as a woman, the land is my responsibility, taking care of it. As a mother and a grandmother, you know, that that's my right too, to teach my children and my grandchildren. That, that's their, their right to, to the land, to care for it. I guess to show not only Haldeman County, but the world that, you know, we're not, we're not a vani vanishing race, you know, we're still here. We still have the abilities to walk on that land, you know, we have every right to reclaim it and in our eyes we're not criminals. We're we're doing the right thing by our own laws. So what do you wish that others knew about the land and water that um that you're defending? Just the history of it. I like to go back right from when the Haldeman Track was granted to Six Nations and why. Um, for people to know and understand why things like this happen, why we, why we reclaim our land, why we're entitled to it and why we still have land rights to it. Um, I guess just be educated and aware of the, the whole situation rather than um, 
people, you know, thinking, oh, they're just a bunch of um, terrorists out there, you know, taking land and, you know, causing trouble and disrupting, you know, our quiet town and stuff like that. Like, it's more to it than that. I just wish people would take the time, I guess, to learn, learn about it and um, never mind just falling into like a stereotypes of land defenders where, you know, they're, you know, burning, burning things or you know, destroying things or whatever, like, I've never done that. I guess just for them to know that women like myself, I'm a grandmother, I'm a mother, and like I, I just decide to stand up for my rights and I'm going to continue to do so. Just wait, just wait, just wait and see. Keep it clean. No one is keeping it clean. We gotta keep it clean. Do you not hear me? Keep it clean. Home. This is my new home. A fresh start full of new adventures. It'll be so much better than my life back. Go. This is not my car. Thousands of miles away from my friends, family. My car. This is not my car. Ja. This is a safer Ja. It is not chaotic. And so much more peaceful. This is a place where I can call. Yeah. Is this really my yeah? I wonder where they're going with all those suitcases filled with unnecessary belongings. Why do they even need so much luggage? They take and take and take. That look in your eyes. I see hatred and spite. My boss said to check on any people like her. I'm sure this is what he means. Humans are one. What about colors? What about race? No matter what external features, we are one. I can't understand a single thing she's saying. Why is she here if she doesn't even speak English? Don't you feel guilty of your own actions? Don't you feel guilty of your lack of compassion? We're all guilty. All guilty of perpetuating the systems we claim to be dismantling and abolishing. Was our old home not good enough? Mother, why choose to do this? Why choose to sacrifice your dignity? It's okay. It's all going to be okay. I know my daughter will love it here. As long as my daughter has a better future, I'm happy. Mother, I'm third culture because of you. Not home here or there. We're outsiders. Due to inclement weather, flights may be delayed. Please stand by. Can you hear her? Do you hear her roar? Do you hear her cry? She cries because we've left nothing for our children. She cries because no one wants to hear her. All flights are 
cancelled due to severe weather. All flights are cancelled due to severe weather. All flights are cancelled due to severe weather. We want equality. All flights have been cancelled and will resume tomorrow. Please see your airline service center for more information. Without respect for the ground that we share, there will be nothing left for our future. Who is responsible? Who is accountable? Who am I? What is your relationship to this land? So can you tell me um, where your people are from? From Six Nations, Grand River Territory. Mostly, mostly the upper end. <laughs> How has Land Back changed you? Uh, like I said, I think I like to think I grew up a bit. <laughs> got got my kids now living living with me, and just I think it's helped me help me mature and and like I see what's really important in life, right? Like you know, with the what my responsibilities are and what you know what I what I really need to take care of in my life. Make sure that you know, because if I'm going to be fighting to protect, you know, a nation, I got to make sure that I'm okay to you know, protect myself and protect protect my family. So why don't you t start off by uh, telling me where your people are from? Um, I guess originally we were sort of Upper New York State, and over time. We've migrated down to what is now known as Six Nations. Um, had to do with an agreement with uh, Brant and Sir Haldimand. And this is where we are now. So, a lot of people don't know this, but land backing can be very boring. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, can you talk a little bit about, like, things to help pass the time. I mean, there's, I guess, realistically, there's lots you can do. Like, mostly I think a lot of, there becomes a lot of camaraderie and like sitting around the fire and just talking about things, just joking about things. Um, there's always lots of work to do, cutting wood, cleaning up. <laughs> um, sort of maintenance. Like if you're if you're that committed to being like productive all the time, there's always <laughs> site maintenance. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Porta potty holes that need to be dug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that stuff, and yeah. So we we have a garden that we made this summer. So there's like the planting, the harvesting. Uh, we've done a couple of things. Um, just to sort of, I guess, foster that camaraderie again, again and like sense of community. Like there was like card night where people would sit around and play Euchre and, you know, we would watch the hockey games. And I think you, they even, I wasn't around, I was out of town at the time, but I think you guys had pay-per-view for like the MMA, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. 
like making sure that we celebrate birthdays, right? We always, you know, make sure to have like a party and acknowledge birthdays. Um, yeah, there's lots you can do. I mean, but there, like, granted, there are like long days where you just sit there for hours, like watching the back door, like keeping an eye out, or you know what I mean. There's not many people around, so you gotta just sit there. <laughs> Listen to the radio, I guess. You could sing lots. <laughs> Smoke a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> we always joke about the lamb back lung because we just like smoke so much, right? <laughs> mm. Oh, hey! Sorry about the kids. We all share our backyards in this neighborhood. Actually, we've been trying to invite This is you. my property. I paid for it. And I don't want random kids running on it all willy-nilly. A royal proclamation. Land is benefits and advantages. Desire is invaluable. Land is benefits and advantages. Commerce. Manufacturers. A convenient acquisition. Seated. Surrendered. A convenient acquisition. Limited. Bounded. Limited. Limited. Bounded. Limited. Bounded. I've got to put my fence up quickly, before anything gets taken. A fence? Wait, can I see the plants? This doesn't seem right. Two row. Side by side. Parallel on the river. Neither interfere. A birch bark canoe. Friendship. Friendship. Peace. Respect. Respect. A ship. Neither interfere. Each one. Honored. Preserved. I will not steer your ship. Here on the blueprints, it shows the fence going into sections of my yard. Apparently the fence can't be built over my tree's roots. So, I have to build into your yard. Otherwise, I have to cut down the tree. Traveling together. Coexistence, not father, but brothers. Sister, our mother. Mother, life. Mother, life. But these trees have been here for over 50 years, and the fence blocks the river. You can't just separate it from us, from the community. Look, I just want my privacy. These are the property lines. Nothing I can do about it. Only the Crown has the authority to buy and sell this land. <laughs> to have and to hold forever. Forever. I know you want your privacy and all, but we are community, and I just- I'm all for community, but this land is mine, and I can do whatever I want with it. Want it. Have it. Survey it. Divide it. It's not really your land. Let me try to explain. Generations ago, my grandmother settled here and became friends with a Mohawk elder named Ojisto. She told my grandma that the earth is our mother and- The earth is our mother? What does that have to do with anything? We're talking about property, real life, not made up stories. It's not made up. Look, the earth is an entity. It's just a different way of knowing. Ugh. Okay, how about this? Have you heard of the Haldeman Proclamation? The Haldeman what? The Haldeman Proclamation. It's a document that grants the Mohawk people's rights to this specific area. The government is constantly disputing these rights and selling off indigenous land, which is why we can buy property here. Keep it clean. Take only what you need and leave some for everyone else. Well, I didn't know. And we just moved, so you can't expect me to. I don't expect you to know. That's why I'm trying to tell you. As settlers in this community, we have to ensure indigenous peoples have access to their land and resources, and a fence blocks access to the river. Oh, like the invasive cattails block turtles from nesting on these riverbanks. Or they will, if your fence stops us from cutting them down. It's just that my whole life I've been looking out for myself. Without fences, we're exposed. Anything can happen. It's dangerous. With fences, we are isolated. We are divided. It can be harmful. I just want to keep my land safe. Here, 
We keep each other safe. We also keep treaties and traditions safe too. Together, protect. Together, protect. Will the fence be a problem, or...? You can't build over the property line, and I won't be happy if you cut down the peach tree. So, you'll be mad? Yeah, and not just about the fence. If you really care about the impacts, let me know and we can talk about it together. With the community. Anyways, come on kids. Inside the belly of the building, cut off from land and air, closed in, the land waits beneath us, beneath the rebar, beneath the concrete, the land remains supported. Keep it clean, take only what you need, leave some for the future, leave some for the future. What can you do? What can you offer? Um, so you spend hundreds of days together with folks <laughs> <laughs> and we're In all Denver. still alive look at that <laughs> i don't know if you live with a big family but that can get testy sometimes <laughs> hundreds of days together with people <laughs> in the middle of a desert no running water you know looming police violence um i'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about um the community and the family of Lambach and the importance of that. Um, yeah, so I think it's interesting because a lot of people were like new to each other coming into this and it's like, it's dicey because you got to have like committed people. You got to have solid people to be able to uh, <laughs> take on an endeavor such as this, right? But. Um, Knowing them from like a previous, like a few of them anyways, some of them I knew obviously longer and were more affiliated with, but like to be able to, to trust people you just met recently and to take something like this on is like, we had conversations about, about it, right? And so they were like, you have to be committed to me. I have to be committed to you. Like we have to have our backs no matter what like no matter what and like not just when it comes to like police like you know you got to be able to trust that these people are going to have your best interest and you know like not trip you when <laughs> when they're trying to get away from the cops or like you know all the all the sort of lashback you're going to get from the community from people who don't agree with you or like settlers who don't agree with you like like being able to like consistently have our our back and stand up for each other and be on the same front i think is a really a really amazing thing we've been able to accomplish yeah and again like you like when community like i was saying before like just being able to like watch these young men grow into like better human beings better partners better parents you know what i mean just by like continuously trying to have like accountability and responsibility to each other like <clears throat> like even like I know there's always controversy about digging up the road oh we're just like you know like we're just haphazardly digging up roads but no like we have those conversations like how does this put us at risk as a whole you know what I mean like 
like how much more like police violence does that bring on but how much like does it designate safety and you know what i mean like so like with legalities like people already have x amount of charges like how does this affect people who dig up the roads that are taking on more legal heat like so like always that community to me is like that that functioning as a whole functioning together and like like i said consistently being there for each other and having each other's back and my kids <laughs> my kids are little land back kids they're funny like it's interesting like just the way they talk now it's so funny i remember because usually usually i get up get me and the one guy a coffee there and then i'll take a little drive around and whichever my kids that i have and is up but they got like twin lakes back there so we usually stop and go around there and the <laughs> And then one day we stop because there was a bunch of geese in there, right? And so we stop and my um, my four-year-old and my three-year-old were with me. And so they get out and they're looking at him. And my little guy's looking around because there's a couple tiny houses in the area. So he's looking and he's like, hey, are those houses? And uh, my daughter, she's like, yeah, yeah, those are houses. Those are the tiny houses. And he's like, oh, people live in there? He's like, do white people live in there? And she's like, no. We took our land back. <laughs> but just like the the very like assured way this four year old was people like, no, we took our land back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like that kind of community, right? Because like and there's very like with Gus's kids and like other people who bring their kids, you can see like a very different like mentality, different humor, different like way of looking at things, right? And that's like another community in itself, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I am difficult to love. I am something like a thunderstorm, loud and scary, but you can't help but admire my beauty. Bend to my power and dance in my glory. I am indigenous woman and I am difficult to love body embedded with the stories of the women before me and the weight heavy like broken bones hearts never tended to and i can't help but wonder if we would argue like this if, if we, we both spoke gunya and geha if the words would still feel like knives and i want to speak to you without causing pain but I don't know how to do that yet. Just like my mother and grandmother and most women in my family, I struggle being vulnerable, birthed out of fear of not surviving because nice women are taken advantage of. My skin is soft and smooth, sweet to the kiss, hearts pulsating. I move like water through, under, over, and will find every crack for survival. And I am difficult to love. No idea how to make a home or love back gently. And how do you love when everything is broken? Picking thorns from my mouth, trying not to internalize that. You don't know how to love me either. Our people's histories weave and tangle, move through our relationship, creating barriers. And I never hated you, but I was angry. Angry that you watched me drown. Angry that our land was being stolen. Angry that I always had to be concerned for our children because raising indigenous children so they don't die, aren't killed, know what it means to have those squinty eyes and brown skin, the glory, the love, it is exhausting. And it never left much room for me and you and it feels impossible to be a soft place when you are a rock i never quite figured that one out and i am indigenous woman and i sit with the moon lay tobacco for the plants i literally sing to corn in sexy sundresses and rubber boots skin soaking up the sun 
digging in gardens to plant my love because oftentimes it is the only place that feels safe. I am like thunderstorm, heavy rain, washing away, cleansing. I am like water. I move through, under, over, and will find every crack for survival. And I am indigenous woman, and I am difficult to love, but I am worth it. The joy, the laughter, love, family, bound in by bonds of failed policy, tangled, difficult. From generation to generation, the cycles can be broken. Step by step. Choice by choice. Elsie, Elsie, that Indian up uh, elder is here to see you. Come on, stop wasting everyone's time. There you are. Let's go. Wow, is this her? She was almost pretty back then. Good luck with her. She hasn't been very cooperative. Well, they never are. Oh, um, well, anyways, good luck. And tap on the window if you need us back here. Float between sage and plastic, your red squaw caught in the act. Dressed now in your garb, the niche word for harmony she has never known. Grandmother's stories stolen from her teepee's library. And me? Well, Kokokok was my name, rejected by them. Now it's Ao or Iwu, depending on which side of the Ottawa River you're on. But how did she get here? Wrestling life at the window, adapted to concrete, silent cedar in her veins, tormented, finding no homeland for her feet. Once upon a treaty is where it all began. Settler agents peddling calligraphied contracts from reserve to reserve in their traveling treaty medicine show. Well-dressed charlatans with a weighted wagon of snake oil treaties. 
using the devil's language of lawyer speak, these papers honor his most gracious majesty, George V of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India, who for Chippewa years in 1923 might as well have been King of the Moon. She fancies fading below the water willows like Ophelia, governmental policies keeping her submerged, Indian agents, foster parents, and policymakers all complicit in the act, obliterating the smell of sage from her clothes. Chief Yellowhead, ancestral leader of her Chippewas, forced to sign an X on the Williams Treaty without settler words he had no idea he was relinquishing their lands. Bleached slivers of birch trees, William Treaty papers, are just beadless invoices a century ignored. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Two million acres now strangled by tarmac. She decides staying won't do. Floating between stops today, no birch bark written note scribbled in the King's English left behind. Being heard feels like rest but she doesn't know the niche word for harmony. Can you still hear their voices? Was that file about me? What was in it? It is what they say about you and what has happened to you, but it doesn't tell your whole story. It's just their paper, not our birch bark. And our birch bark contains the stories that live in us about the people who live in us. Elsie, Elsie, are you there? Go away. Isn't that your ancestor? Your great, great, great grandfather? He... Elsie, you finally remembered how to talk to me. I've missed you. I haven't seen you since you went camping a year ago and laid in that forest all alone. You sat under that birch tree and, well, you know the rest. Yeah, the rest is they locked me up for talking to you again. You're the reason everyone thinks I'm crazy. You're not real. Well... What do you think? This time they locked you up for protesting, not talking to me, so that's not on me. You did good. I saw you at Queen's Park. You're really helping the movement. What does protesting matter if they can just pick me up and use my previous arrests and hospitalizations as an excuse to detain me in here? It's bullshit. I'm just so done with it all. I felt just like that before I died. My members were starving. Our land was being taken away, and here I was, the chief of the Chippewas, unable to provide food for our people. I fought on the sides of those that were turning against me. I was used and then thrown away. I saw the signs of it all being taken away. But listen, look at us now. You can protest. You can seek counsel. We are trying to right the wrongs. Can you still hear their voices? It's so hard to hear them. Elsie can lose touch with reality. Elsie was in foster care. Elsie was abused. Elsie's daughter was taken away from her. Elsie needs treatment. Can you still hear their voices? What are you doing here, Mom? Who told you I was here? That woman at the Friendship Center told me you were here. I was getting some help with groceries, and she told me about what happened to you. So you aren't with Dave anymore? Where are you staying now? I am staying at the rooming house on Pape with your sister Jojo. It's not so bad. I'll be getting back on my feet. I always do. For fuck's sakes, Mom. Why can't you just be a normal mom for once? I wish you had your shit together.
stop following men everywhere they go, like you did with dad when you first left the res, and then when they leave you, you force one of us to help you out again. This isn't fair to Jojo, who's barely coping. You shouldn't be staying with her. Elsie, sweetie. I don't want to listen to your pointless apologies. Can you still hear their voices? Mama! Mama, come back! Elsie, can you please talk? If not to me, then at least to your daughter. I have to go soon. Can you please not pull the silent treatment right now? I have to drop Queenie off at my parents and get to work, but I thought you'd want to see her before the hearing. You're coming, right? You can still get visitation rights if you come. I'm not trying to take her away from you forever, but you see why I'm doing this, right? Shit, Elsie, talk to me. God damn it. Artie, you know I love Queenie so much. Queenie, you are my sweet baby girl, and it's so hard to face you with all I've put you through. I love you. I, I wish you were really here with me. I've missed you since they took you away. Elsie can lose touch with reality. Elsie was in foster care. Elsie was abused. Elsie's daughter was taken away from her. Elsie needs treatment. What to do? What to do? Elsie can lose touch with reality. But wouldn't you if this happened to you? Elsie was in foster care. Yeah, yes I was. What was the alternative? Elsie was abused. Yeah, but so what? What does thinking about it do now? Elsie's daughter was taken away from her. <sighs> Elsie needs treatment. Yeah, but I think it's too late for that. Gunda de Waneos ne Juna Tuizon. The women are free. In the future. In our future. The women are free. Will that be your future? The future doesn't make itself. Our ancestors made ours. You will make your children's future and their children's and theirs. What will that future be? Will the woman be free? Will the land be safe? Thoughts and intentions alone do not change the world. What can you do? What will you commit to? One step. One action. One commitment held in the birch bark in your hand. Hold the intention. Hold the action. Bring it to the fire.
Hold your birth chart in your hand. Let it hold your intention. Each summer, the monarch butterfly travels to this land, from mountains far to the south of Turtle Island, in a place now called Mexico, 3,000 miles away. The migration takes two to three months. Each lives weeks. It takes generations of butterflies to traverse the land, to arrive here. Each butterfly does its part and takes a step on the journey, regardless of whether they're the ones to reach the destination. Seven generations forward is a long way. The journey there is a series of steps, a series of choices of actions. Towards a future unknown and unseen. A future imagined, a future dreamt, a future for our children. What can you do? What will you do? What step can you take? If you have a commitment in your heart, a thought of what you can do tomorrow or today, imagine that thought into your birch bark. Place the birch bark into the fire. Ignite your imagination, your commitment. Seven generations forward. Seven generations forward. Seven generations forward. Seven, Seven generations forward. Hey.